I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, tonight is a uh, special Board of Education meeting. We have uh, three items potentially to, actually four items potentially on the docket this evening. Uh, we're gonna be starting off with uh, the 2021 budget and 2021 uh, tax levy. And um, before we get going, I'm gonna have Sue take the roll call. William Baumgart? Here. Corey Montillo? Here. Greg Dietz? Here. Amanda Roddy? Here. Diane Voigt? Here. Patrick McCaffrey? Here. Kurt O'Brien? Here. Karen Reinecheck? Here. Joseph Como? Uh, here. And so uh, were we properly posted with the media? Yes, we were. Okay. Um, as I had mentioned before, we're um, going to be starting out uh, talking on our budget this evening. Uh, Patrick, do you want to uh, fill us in on sure. uh, the, the, at least the summary information? Uh, this evening, we are here to consider the approval of the final 2020-21 budget and tax levy. These action items will bring to a close a 12-month budget development process. It should be noted that starting next month, the district will begin work on the 20 to 21-22 mm -hmm. yeah. budget. The Board of Education welcomes public input throughout the process as we work towards final approval next October. So our next the action item is the approval of the 2021 budget. The tax levy summary and budget adaptation format are attached to your executive summary along with the final 2020 2021 budget booklet for your review. I move approval of the 2021 budget as presented with $201,012,648 in total revenue and $233,127,943 in total expenditures, which includes $19,200,941 in required operating transfers per the Department of Public Instruction's accounting guidelines. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second. Second by um, Mr. Montillo. Discussion? Darren, do you want to just uh, briefly bring us up to speed on, uh, we had uh, some major assumptions. There's a number of assumptions that go into a budget as we're developing it. We've locked all those assumptions in, obviously, now. And there were some, some uh, major things that I think, if you could update us from uh, when we had the hearing till now. Sure. Um, if you remember, the budget that was presented at the budget hearing was really um, a snapshot of what we knew in July, which was pre-COVID, pre-return to school plan, pre a lot of other responses we've had to come up with. So, um, so the uniqueness or the few highlights I have written down here for this budget is first of all it, it for the people at home who are looking at this or who are on our website looking at it it has a, a deficit position of two million two million two thousand and ninety dollars and that's broken down into the following categories um, eight hundred thousand dollars of that is COVID response um, primarily staffing two hundred fifty thousand dollars of that is for construction at Hawthorne next summer um, and this is that 250,000 is the portion of that construction that will fall within this fiscal year um, because anything in the summer obviously rolls over two fiscal years and, and will capture the other 750,000 next year. And then we have site carryover, which we've done, um, I think going back to the late 90s, um, where schools that don't expend their budgets um, get to roll it forward in the amount of $952,090. So those three areas generate that deficit position. I can tell you that the COVID response amount, um, FNF, we talked about it. Um, we set aside our surplus from last year, um, and I, I recommended to the committee, and I think they agreed with it, rather than me asking for uh, what I would say is around $2.5 $2 million of COVID response um, that we could expend, that I budget what we know right now we need, um, and then come back to FNF through budget amendments um, because we simply don't know with um, ESSER and FEMA reimbursement and potential unemployment reimbursement, um, we might not need all of that money. We might need all of it because this is all new to the people who will be writing those checks and Lord knows how long that will take for those checks to actually hit uh, hit our desks. So, so that's a little bigger deficit than we have, but I, I, I want to stress the Hawthorne construction as well as something that we've been talking about 
for two years. Uh, and site carryover is a, a traditional thing we do. It's just the numbers are bigger this year because we shut down the schools in March. And we let them have all their carryover because we knew they'd be running into incidental COVID response, things that they're doing at their schools. Um, so again, this is a, a, I don't know if it's a well-planned deficit, but it was one that we've talked about and it shouldn't be a surprise um, to anyone. A couple other things, um, I guess I put it under the category of future struggles. Um, our three-year average enrollment, resident enrollment, um, is down nearly 300 students. Um, I think this year is going to be a hard year to project next year's budget with because it's such a strange year. Um, one nice thing about school budgeting is you can tend to roll the costs forward with a pretty high degree of accuracy. Um, I think there's some good news, but I think it's... Um, short-lived. I think the open enrollment in numbers, which are fantastic, uh, in, in particular, you achieve. I think they're artificially high this year. I think people, you know, they, they sought out their own safest route through all of this, and I think you achieve was a landing place for a lot of families. Um, I, our resident numbers are down, as I mentioned earlier, but I think they're artificially low, because all 4K numbers, for example, are low. I think a lot of parents are homeschooling or, or whatever, so Again, the data is there. There's a lot of data. Um, what it really means, I, I don't really, I'm not really sure. But I think OE is better than it is, and I also think resident enrollment's not as bad as we think it is. Um, our staffing model this year is rather specialized. I'll call it um, different instructional formats out there, so we can't really use staffing exactly to cast forward. So just some things. Um, to think about and I'll roll into some tax levy comments just because this is all it's two motions unless you want me to break up my comments into the two categories it's I'm fine either way I, I think you can keep talking on okay um, sure. the tax levy increase is 2.69 percent but includes 5.15 million dollars of defeasance or prepayment of referendum debt um, that was one of our financial goals when we um, went to referendum was to keep the um, interest as low as possible. We weren't going to borrow for longer than 10 years. Um, and I can't remember the third one, but they're all in the book uh, if you want to look them up on the last page. Um, by doing this, um, the school district of Waukesha will pay off 35% of the principal uh, balance of $60 million in two years. Um, we'll also, just by this single prepayment of $5.1 million, save $800,000 in interest expense. And that's a true savings. Um, a, a cost we'll never incur in a levy that we never can levy. Um, and no, we can't use that $800,000 for something else that's tied specifically. So 100% tax savings from what we otherwise would have run into. With that, we have to strike that balance of prepaying that debt between um, a huge tax increase, this is like your mortgage, you have to pay more up front to save the interest in the long run. Um, so when I looked at it, um, our overall tax levy from last year to this year, even with that defeasance, is going to be down 15 cents to $8.03, which um, based on the early numbers I've seen, will be the second lowest tax rate in Waukesha County for a K-12 school district. Um, Maguanago, I think, is coming in at $8 even. Um, if we wouldn't have done the defeasance, we probably would have been around 760 just to show you the dollars we're throwing up. So again, um, we hope to pay, if we can keep this pace up, we'll pay off um, that referendum debt in six years. Um, and I think come in about $8 million lower than interest than what we um, used in our information campaign. So I think there's a good story behind all that. So that's all the comments. I'll be happy to answer. Um, any questions? The other agenda items related to teacher wages and all that are also incorporated into this document, so you know what you're you're um, voting on with this budget. Mr. O'Brien, I just think you 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 missed said something there, Darren. You meant eight hundred thousand dollars lower in interest payments, right? Yeah. What did I say? Oh, that sounded better, didn't it? <laughs> but you're right, eight hundred thousand. Any other questions or comments on the 2020-2021 budget? Okay, Sue, um, why don't you please take the roll call vote on approving the 2020-2021 budget? 
Corey Montillo. Aye. William Baumgart. Aye. Patrick McCaffrey. Aye. Karen Reinichek. Aye. Kurt O'Brien. Aye. Amanda Roddy. Aye. Greg Dietz. Aye. Diane Boyd. Aye. Joseph Como. Aye. Passes 9 0. Sue. Patrick? Uh, next up is the approval of the 2021 operational capital expansion community service and debt service tax levy. The final tax rate is $8.03 which represents a 38 cents decrease from what was presented at the budget hearing in September. I move to approve the 2020-2021 tax levy for the district in the amount of $88,319,154, including $3,258,407 for the capital expansion fund and $11,236,436 for the debt service funds. There's a second to that. Second by Mrs. Reincheck. Discussion? Okay, Sue, so please take the roll call vote on the 2020-2021 uh, uh, Community Service Tax Levy. Greg Deeds. Aye. Karen Reinichek. Aye. Corey Montiel. Aye. Patrick McCaffrey. Aye. K Diane Voigt. Aye. William Baumgart. Aye. Kurt O'Brien. Aye. Amanda Roddy. Aye. Joseph Como. Aye. Passes 9-0, Sue. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you everyone for uh, basically a year long piece of work. We, we work on our budget throughout the year. And this was a very unique year, as Darren had pointed out a, a few things. They, we could probably give Darren uh, a couple hours and he could keep going on what's, what's unique for about this year. So we will continue to work through this uh, together as a community and we appreciate everyone's, everyone's efforts. At this time, I would be looking for a motion to go into executive session. We have a couple items to consider. Yes, Bill. A question before I, I'll make you a motion, but I want to know, do you want to do them both at the same time or you want to go in and out and in and out? Uh, let's do both. Okay. <clears throat> I move that we adjourn to a closed session for Wisconsin Statutes 19.85, parentheses one, parentheses C, to consider employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation of any public employee over which the government body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. That is base wage increase and supplemental wages for teacher employee group. Secondly, I would like to also adjourn to a closed session per Wisconsin statutes 19.85 parentheses one parentheses E for deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. That involves the Oakdale um, purchase possibilities. And, Second. Uh, we need to read the tax keys into the motion, please. Oh, the tax, uh, tax keys, WAKC 1360198, WAKC 1377002002, WAKC 1377003. Second. Second by Mr. O'Brien. So we take the roll call vote. Kurt O'Brien. Aye. Patrick McCaffrey. Aye. Greg Dietz. Aye. Amanda Roddy. Aye. William Bongard. Aye. Diane Boyd. Aye. Corey Montiel. Aye. Karen Reinichek. Aye. Joseph Como. Aye. Passes 9 0. Uh, we'll go immediately into closed session. I don't know, it's always hard to guess how long, but um, perhaps 30 minutes, and then uh, we could potentially be reconvening. There's a chance we might not reconvene, but we may. So.